What up everybody, it's iPadBeatMaking.com here today, going to show you how to use Nano Studio 2's AUV3 MIDI effects and get those printed directly onto the timeline. I know that this is kind of a frustrating thing for some iOS DAW users who use Nano Studio 2, BeatMaker 3, you've got to use MIDI route and it gets a little complicated, whereas apps like AEM or Audio Evolution Mobile and Cubases have a really nice pass through button that allows the MIDI to instantly get to the timeline. So it's a real convenient workflow, but I've showed you how to do this in the Beatmaker 3 video that you can check out here. And now I'm gonna show you how to do this within Nano Studio 2. Now, what are AUV3 MIDI effects? Well, these are kind of the secret sauce that really open up so many possibilities, creatively speaking. So we've got Adam Piano Roll 2, which is an incredible piano roll you can use as an extension in most DAWs or even AUM that allows you to have things that you see in FL Studio, such as the scale highlighting, ghost notes in the form of layers, and the editing is really, really good in it also. So say you don't like the native piano roll of certain apps, you can go ahead and use Adam Piano Roll 2 to go ahead and supplement that. But then let's say if you want to build out your chords with a really intuitive app like Scalar, where you can use Scalar Control as an AUV3 MIDI, bind the MIDI or just play the pads directly, and you can build out really complicated MIDI compositions, chord compositions and chord progressions really easily using something like Scalar 2. And then there's cases where you might want to get a step sequencer vibe and you use something like Polybeat or Akatron, it becomes no issue whatsoever when you have that workflow within your native DAW environment if it supports AEV3 MIDI effects, which fortunately Nano Studio 2 does. So there are so many workflow possibilities that you can use with AEV3 MIDI effects. And this hack, and this is a free hack by the way, which I think is great will allow you to unlock this within Nano Studio 2. And the beauty of it is it also works on iPhone as well, which we will go over later in this video. So if you are an iPhone user, fret not. I know for a long time it's felt like there's no MIDI route app that allows you to do this on iPhone. Well, in this video, we will not be using MIDI route at all. We'll completely bypass it. We're going to be using the app Streambiter, and this app is currently free in the app store it has not always been free but according to the app history it's been free for the past couple of years so hopefully it stays free going forward if you're watching this video from the future for now let's just get started with Streambiter. so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to launch Streambiter, and this is important i like to always launch Streambiter before i launch nano studio 2. I hit install rules. I don't know if I'm actually doing anything when I do that. I just hit that green button because it at least lets me know that something happened on the app. So I'll go ahead and do that. And now we'll open up Nano Studio 2 and we are ready to go. And I'm gonna start with just the stock template here. Usually when I make beats, I have uh, pre-made templates that I like to use. But in this case, I wanna start this off as simply as possible because this just might be the workflow that you are starting off your Nano Studio 2 session in. So, We'll go from there so everything is really simple and easy to follow. Okay, so where should we begin? Let's start because there just was an update to this app, uh, Octatron or Octatron, however you say it. Let's go ahead and start there. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to create an external MIDI track and we're going to select in MIDI. On this, we're gonna go on screen keys only and we'll leave that like that. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is hit this MIDI button on the top right here. And then we're gonna hit this piano over here to the left and MIDI output device, we're gonna set that to be stream biter. And in this case, we're gonna do the MIDI output channel to channel one, since it's the first track that we are working with. Now from there, we will add MIDI effects, Octatron right here. And now that we've got Octatron loaded, we will hit the octopus symbol here and we will load a mapping and that mapping we will load is going to be NS2 Slate. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is go to our Slate Kit, hit the mixer symbol up here at the top. For in MIDI, we're going to select Stream Biter, and then we are going to select Channel 1, and we're gonna see Track Receives MIDI when turn it from Selected to Always. And this will make sure that even when this track is not selected, 
we will still be able to transmit MIDI to this slate track right here. Now with all that, let's get back to Octatron, hit kick, and now we've got it playing the kick and we are just in the stock kit and we can just draw in our steps right here. And of course, if you know Octatron, you know that you can do your different scenes up here. I'm not going to go through all that. I'm just going to lay this MIDI down as is for the demonstration of this video. Now, all we have to do to record this in is simply select the track and hit record. Now we've still got that MIDI going here being transmitted. So we would turn the power off on it, but just to see if it works when it's not selected, because we did say uh, transmit MIDI always, let's see if it also works when it is not even selected, if we can record into it. And it works. All right, so we have successfully gotten our MIDI out of Octatron and into the Slate MIDI timeline here. And as you can see, all the MIDI is right there. So we are good. Now, the next thing we are going to do, and let me just go ahead and rename this real quick. Oh, it's Octacron, not Octatron. Let me go ahead and Octacron. I think that's how you spell it. Let's be sure. Octacron. All right, cool. Octacron, not Octatron. Octacron is the name of the app. And I just like to, for good measure, mute this MIDI. And what I do also, and I don't think you need to do this, but I just do this just to be sure, is I then turn this back to selected from always. That way I don't have to worry about it um, firing any MIDI from any other apps as I go forward through this process. And so the next thing we will do is we will create another external MIDI track and again, we'll hit the MIDI button at the top here, then hit the piano, send it out to Streambiter. Let's go ahead and make this channel two. And for in MIDI, let's go on screen keys only so that we don't get a feedback loop. And I believe I got this workflow from a video from a YouTube maker named Number 37. So shout out to them. It was real helpful for me. Be sure to check out their videos also. And from here, I will go ahead and add an AU instrument and let's go to let's say pearson platinum and we've got our keys laid out all right so we'll go ahead and go with that now let's go back to our external midi track here and i'll go ahead and name this uh psp scaler just to give an indication of what this is controlling. And for this track, for input MIDI, we are going to go channel two only. And we're gonna go stream biter and we're gonna go to always um, track receives MIDI. And from here, we are ready to go to MIDI effects, find scalar control, and we are good to go within scalar. So I could just select a chord set here. Let me turn down Pearson Platinum just a little bit and maybe give a little bit of reverb to this. All right, let's say I wanted to record that in. We have no MIDI here on the timeline currently, but let's say I wanted to record that in. What I would do is simply hit record. And our MIDI automatically goes right to the timeline of, um, excuse me, the piano roll of Pearson Platinum. So we are good to go. And then let's say, you know what, we have this MIDI, which is cool, but I have no idea what the chords are or anything like that. I just went ahead and played with something with Scalar, just being lazy. And let's um, 
we can launch Adam on the Pearson Platinum track and have it capture all of the core data. All right, so let's capture the core data. Now we can uh, unlaunch it. And we've got that data now um, pulled right into the Atom interface. So we could add another external MIDI track and we could go ahead and add MIDI effects, Atom Piano Roll 2. And as you can see, it's now captured in the layer so we know what's going on. And we will go ahead and turn this to on-screen keys only and change the MIDI destination to track three. And now we will create another track. Let's go ahead with, um, let's go with Moog, for instance, my favorite of the moment, uh, bass, which is this Trilly bass. Turn that down a little bit. Uh, MIDI in is going to be stream biter channel three and always receives MIDI make sure we have this labeled all right so got that labeled and we can go right into Adam and trigger it and let's say you know what I just want to draw something that's going to follow the uh, the root note so I'll just draw that in and then we can go ahead and launch it and see how it sounds. And then let's go ahead and extend this out. So we've got it simple right now. Go ahead and duplicate that. All right. And let's say we wanted to add something to this. Let's give it a little bit more vibe. this bring it over and in order to get the other bars to work with an atom we have to extend all this out because it's looping at four bars right now now we've got it looping at eight Real simple, so now we will go ahead and record this in. And bam, just like that, we have got the MIDI in, and now we will go ahead and unlaunch it turn the power off and just for good measure you commute it also and for in midi uh change it back to selected instead of always and just like that we have used octocron adam piano roll 2 and scalar 2 in order to build this entire track so pretty cool stuff but it also works on iphone so i will show you the iphone version of this workflow now Okay, so now I've got StreamBiter launched and I am hitting install rules just to make sure that it's doing something, it's active. I don't know if that even does anything like I said before, but I just hit that button just to be sure. Now we're going to launch Nano Studio 2. And again, I will start with the default template to be sure that it's congruent across all these different platforms. And now we can go ahead and create a external MIDI track. And we're going to set it up the same way as before Hit the MIDI button at the top right here, send it out to Streambiter channel one. It looks a little different, but it's actually the same thing. It's just the way they've done it for the screen space. And we're doing on screen keys only 
as the setting and now we will go to MIDI effects and now we can select Adam Piano Roll 2. We'll just go ahead and work with that for now and I will add a AU instrument track here and we'll go with Pearson Platinum. Go with some keys again and from here we can go ahead and make sure that our input is Streambiter channel 1 and we're going to have a uh, receive MIDI always and on the external MIDI track here we've got Adam Piano Roll 2 and I could just say select a scale and go like D major and just draw a scale real quick here excuse me draw a chord real quick All right, so we've got that chord progression built in Adam Piano Roll 2, and we should just be able to hit record and be good to go. And now let's take a look at our MIDI data. It's all there, just like we did in Adam Piano Roll 2, and we are set. So yeah, this workflow works on iPhone as well as iPad. As you can see, just use Streambiter. It's totally free. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit the like button as well as the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on the latest news, tips, tricks, sales, beats, reviews, and more. It's iPadBeatMaking.com. Peace.